The Tigers lose another one. We have some injury updates to go over quite a lot, actually. And then also an update on the Futures game and who from the Tigers organization will be playing. Let's talk about it all today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked on Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. The easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Welcome in. Welcome all everybody. Happy halfway point of the week here as the Tigers lose five to three at the hands of the Minnesota Twins on Tuesday afternoon. That brings their record to 38 and 47 on the year, they are a loss away from being 10 games under 500. let Let's just get right into it. What went wrong? This is going to shock everybody. And I feel like I've even used that joke so many times now that it's it's almost expected and kind of just a, an assumed bit that I'm, I'm just going to do every episode. This is going to shock people. The offense is, is what went wrong. In this one, they get shut out for eight of nine innings. They do score three runs with Scooble on the mound, which a lot of times this year is barely enough. Uh, But the bullpen, which we'll talk about in a second, continues to struggle as well. Uh, Focusing on the offense here first, though, uh, what else is there to say? That's a genuine question. Right. I'm not saying that to be dramatic and just be like, oh, like, what else is there to say? No, like, genuinely, what else is there to say about it? What have we not talked about at length, at, at nauseum, in, involved with this offense when it comes to this offense? Riley Green goes one for four. He's now hitting 253 with an 826 OPS. Our four and five hitters in this game were Mark Hanna and Gio Urshela. Mark Hanna has a 224 average and a 669 OPS. That OPS is in the 500s since the beginning of May. Right? Not the end of May, not a month, more like closer to a two month sample size. And Gio Urshela is now hitting 237 with a 581 OPS. Remarkable. That is your three and four hitters. Yeah, three and four hitters in this ballgame. And and we're, we're confused and we're wondering why this offense isn't good. That's actually not true. No one is confused on why. Everyone, I think, is pretty blatantly aware of why this offense isn't good and knows that that is a testament as to why. Colt Keith goes 0 for 3 with a walk. The walk, I actually thought, was a really good at bat. But the the issue that continues to plague him is, is he cannot consistently catch up to fastballs over the heart of the plate. He had one in this game. I I don't remember which at bat it was. I wish I did so I could be more specific and and really point everybody to to the one specific moment. But in in one of the ABs, and it wasn't the walk either, he legitimately saw like a a, a 94-mile-an-hour fastball down the pipe. I mean, you, you barely could have placed it over the heart of the plate any better and was really late and fouled it off to the push side. Until he gets, whether it's a mechanical adjustment he needs to continue making, whether it's just flat out still adjusting to timing, right, at the major league level, probably a combination of both, whatever it may be, 
it, it, he is not going to legitimately take off and take that big step forward until this is addressed and, and fixed. I'm sure it's been addressed until this is fixed. These issues are just going to continue for Colt Keith, who now has a 590 OPS and a 229 batting average and was your five hitter. Your leadoff hitter, 705. Oh my gosh, 705 OPS. Look at this lineup. You had two people with an OPS over 700. You had one hitter with an OPS over 706. Winsio Perez is, is o, another 0 for 4 day away from you having one hitter over a 700 OPS. That is remarkable. That is astonishing. Ryan Kreidler did hit a homer despite his now 472 OPS. I mean, we're at this point, I'm just playing the OPS game. I, I'm not trying to subject anybody to that. Badu hitting 122 now. And this all leads to a, a much, you know, bigger picture conversation that we're going to have in our stuff section segment, whatever, at the end of the show about what to do with some of these, these personnel decisions that I think are probably starting to loom again. But this offense is bad, and it was bad again, and they lost. Not rocket science. Don't have too much else to say on it at this point. We talk about it five days a week. It's a really bad offense. The bullpen, unfortunately, has not always been really bad and was absolutely phenomenal in April. And then in May, I really like dug my heels in and I tried to be a hero. And I was like, oh, we're, we're don't worry, guys. It's it's OK. I don't think they're that bad. It's just a rough stretch. They still got some good pieces. And then now it's, it's a complete disaster. I, Will Vest and Bo Brisky both pitch in this ball game. They both give up runs. I tweeted this out, but there, there's a never-ending cycle that is happening with this bullpen right now in 2024. And it's all of these pitchers, and, and Jason Foley is like the only exception to this, but I, Jason Foley hasn't even been in super high leverage for like multiple outings in a row in like forever because this team's been so bad lately. So like he, he is omitted, but like, you know, maybe well, we don't know. Maybe like he certainly hasn't been as good as he was in April. He's down like five miles an hour from what he was the first three weeks of the season. So this cycle is, is mind blowing to me. It is. You have a starting pit, starting pitcher. You have a reliever rather. Okay. Imagine you're a reliever. You, you are, you're a major league reliever. Lifelong dream come true. You work. In low leverage situations, as kind of an audition, and you do well. So then you get more responsibility, and then you get higher leverage opportunities, and then you blow all of those, unfortunately, right? Consistently, like multiple of them, not just a one off, oh, that's a small sample size. No, like you, you, you consistently just throw up in those situations. So then you get moved back to low leverage and somebody else gets an opportunity in high leverage. And then they do the same. And then you start crushing it in low leverage again. And then you switch and then you switch and then you switch and you keep going. And then I bash my head against a brick wall because that's all that's happened all year. It just keeps happening. It, it's a spin cycle. And it's not stopping ever. It, it, it's remarkable to me. And like there is a massive difference, as we've talked about a lot on this show, between high and low leverage situations in in um, out of the bullpen, right? Like in statistically, that that is backed up. That's something that that numbers prove. That's something that obviously the eye test proves a lot, right? It is harder to pitch in high leverage than low leverage. It's just really staggering to me that every single person that flourishes in low leverage then gets promoted to high leverage, fails, goes back, and then back and back, and it's just a, a, a seesaw. And it's it's getting to me. 
because I, I don't trust anything anymore. Right? Bo Brisky, I, I thought, looked incredible. This is now th- two two or three high-leverage opportunities in a row that that he has struggled pretty mightily in. And Will Vest is, is like the, the poster child for this conversation. And, and it's not just those two. It's everybody. Shelby Miller. Alex Fiedo, go down the list. So that happened again. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got for what went wrong. It it, it wasn't a great game, and that is pretty, you know, bullpen and offense is like two of the three, <laughs> you know, if you break baseball down into offense, bullpen, and starting pitching, that, that's two of the three categories right there. So let's talk about what went right. We'll talk about Tarek Skubal. And then a couple of the offensive uh, performances that that weren't completely terrible. And then we'll get into stuff. All right. We'll do all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Booking.com. This episode of Locked on Tigers is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. With summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yes, we're talking about your rivals' cities. Look, any New York fan can head to Boston, catch a baseball game on Boston's turf, and still want their team to win, but also be excited about having lobster rolls and falling in love with their waterfront hotel Cleveland is also a fantastic city that I love visiting to and catching a Tigers versus Guardians game. I know I'm not supposed to say that, but these are just some of the examples of why it's so cool to go and take that trip and really still check out some cities that maybe we're still not very fond of on the baseball field. From hotels that overlook stadiums to family-friendly resorts, Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travel this MLB season. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. So book today on Booking.com on the site or in the Booking.com app. Booking.com, Booking. Yeah. Also going to talk to you all about our friends over at Game Time. We love Game Time here. They are some of the best in the business. They're an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball as well, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying. MLB tickets. They have so many great features over there. Flash deals, so you can save more with exclusive in-app deals. And again, the closer you get to an event, whether it's sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc., anything you can think of, uh, they have it over there. And the closer you get, the cheaper that it actually can get. They also have zone deals, which is one of my favorite features, where uh, you choose the section, game time then chooses the seats for you, and you can save money that way. And then they have the game time guarantee with one of the most flexible customer service policies in the ticketing industry where game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find a seat in the same section and row for cheaper. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked On Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in as always, making us your first listen every day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. And we will be back tomorrow recapping game two and talking about anything else surrounding the Tigers organization. Also, be sure to check out Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you, bringing you the biggest stories in the sports world from all of our great hosts here at Locked On. Again, Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24-7. You can subscribe on YouTube or check it out for free in the Amazon Fire TV channels app talked about what went wrong in this game in segment one uh let's talk about what went right Tarek Skubal six innings three earned runs seven strikeouts I think it's important to remember how high of a bar he has set for himself this is still a quality start and and it was still you know a tied game 
uh, when he left. Like, this was not a bad outing. Uh, Tarek, like, ending the season, if he was to end the year with a sub-2 ERA, would have been, like, one of the greatest seasons ever. So, like, it, it's important to remember, like, you know, the, where the bar actually is set. And I think that he just did so well the first couple of months that maybe it got to, to an unreasonable place for some fans. This was still a very fine outing. He is the last person on this team that I am like worried about. And, and again, th this is in, in the category of what went right, right? Like th this was still, I, I think, a pretty solid outing, all things considered. Obviously not his best. Uh, and given, you know, his last start against Philly, that might have been his best. Uh, you know, just comparing those two, uh, obviously one is way better than the other. But, um, you, you know, really in this one, like the command just got from him a couple of times. He just left a couple of balls over the heart of the plate. Um, that, that's really all it comes down to. And, you know, he's so good and has such high velocity that sometimes you can go back and watch some of his earlier starts this year. And we talked about it a little bit on here, but if you watch it, you know, yourself, you can get much more of a, kind of understanding of what I'm talking about. He does that sometimes with fastballs and he's talked about it before. And he's talked about kind of the propensity to give up home runs uh, when he gets hit hard. Uh, but I think two really important things. One is that the Scooble inning is a thing of the past, right? Like the, for, for those longtime listeners. Um, but it, it's, it's no longer are the days where like one run becomes four in one inning. Uh, against Scooble, right? Or, or one base runner ends up leading to four or five runs in a half inning. And so that's really important. I think that that is, you know, credit to him. Um, and and also, like, his fastball is just such a good pitch that sometimes he got away with it in, in some outings, right? That's what I went on a tangent there before I finished my thought. But that that is, that was my original point, right? It's like sometimes the fastball does creep over the heart of the plate, um, but it's such a good pitch that more times than not, even if it's not commanded perfectly, it's still going to get at worst a foul ball, if not still a strike a lot of the times. And so um, in this game, he just had a couple of pitches, not even all of them fastballs, just a couple of pitches that caught too much of the heart of the plate. Um, but but still, uh, uh, again, a, a fine outing. He had three earned runs, four hits, one walk, seven strikeouts. And then obviously, you know, the home run against was – the bigger blow, but uh, the changeup I thought was uh, kind of unbelievable in this game. I thought, and, and it is, it's just an unbelievable pitch, but I, I thought the changeup was stellar. Uh, I still think that this was, again, uh, it is a quality start st statistically, and uh, th this is still an outing that the Tigers should be expected to go out there and at least put together, you know, a competitive ball game late, if not just straight up win. That's the, the whole point of, gauging what a quality start is so uh yeah scooble another he's not era in the year is now two four five but this is just another example of this offense not being able to carry the water of what the pitchers have been putting out there offensively justin henry malloy uh definitely had a pretty solid game uh had the home run which was an absolute moonshot and then had a single in this one as well. You know, I, I think it's important to look at those two strikeouts as well, not to just be like a Debbie Downer, um, but you look, go look at those strikeouts. It's all fastballs, right? And that is the, the, clearly the biggest thing that he is having to adjust to. He is way, way, way behind all high velocity fastballs. He has not caught up to, I'm not sure any of them since getting called up. Now that home run, I don't know why I said that with a weird inflection. That homer, I think I was, I was trying to say homer, and then I said home run. Anyway, the homer he hit was uh, was a changeup inside, and he got under it and absolutely cranked it. And that's beautiful. That's awesome. I'm glad. I think he is making adjustments, right? We, we're starting to see it, starting to spray the ball a little bit more and put the ball in play a little bit more. But the strikeouts and the swing and miss problems that he does have are almost all the inability to catch up to velocity at the major league level so far. So that's a big adjustment that he is going to have to make because if he can't, then people are just only going to throw him fastballs and he's not going to hit anything. So important to remember that. Um, and then Ryan Kreidler with, with the big home run in this ball game. Um, yeah. Nice piece of hitting. Uh, it doesn't really change my opinion on Kreidler. I think when uh, Javi's back here in a little bit, he's probably going to get sent down. I'd be shocked if it was anybody else, but yeah, a, a good moment. Put a good swing on it. His second career home run. And uh, yeah, nice to get offense out of the nine hole there 
just unfortunate that the Tigers still couldn't win, even despite getting production out of the nine hole with a 472 OPS. So uh, unfortunate, but uh, yeah, put a good swing on that ball. Let's talk stuff. All right, we'll do that right after this. Got to talk to y'all today about our friends over at Prize Picks. We talked about Prize Picks at the beginning of the show. We're going to talk about them again because they are America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can get in on the daily action with your friends and become a part of the Prize Picks community. Today, you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Again, taking a look at all of the awesome uh, numbers that are put out there. Starting pitching strikeouts is one I talk about all the time, but a really fun part of the WNBA season. You can take a look at those. Also, just MLB fantasy points scored even. They have hits, home runs, you name it. You can add it to your prize picks lineup. So be sure to download the app and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in as always. Let's talk stuff. Um, I, I think the thing I want to start with, well, really quickly, I actually thought the home plate umpire was fantastic in this game. I, I didn't catch who it was. Um, I, I don't know if they, maybe I just missed it. I didn't catch the the name. I, I know most of the umpires by now. I, I, I'm not sure who did. I'm sure we'll find out tomorrow on the umpire auditor, but um, I actually thought he called a really good game. And, and maybe I'm totally wrong, but I, I thought it was a, it was a really Really good strike zone, so I want to give credit where credit is due there. Um, I, I think big picture, I just want to ask a really quick question, and, and that's when do we, as an organization, when do the Tigers just call up all of the potential pieces that like could be something in the future and just run it? Right, You are spiraling out of control. June has been an utter disaster, or was, I should say. We're, we're in July now. A complete disaster. And and you are losing games left and right. You are plummeting in the standings. You've been one of the worst teams in baseball. If you just take away the first five games of the season, you can also do, okay, keep the first five games of the season, but take away, you know, like Tarek Skubal starts. Like there's so many things you can do to just be like, wow, like this team really is falling very quickly. So at what point do you just say, you know what, we're going to not give so many at bats to the Gio Urshela's of the world who who again has a 237 average and a 581 OPS and we're going to call Torque back up we're going to call Parker Meadows back up we're going to call Jace Young up you know post trade deadline once I assume Carson Kelly will be gone not that he's going to be like the headline of a trade or anything like we talked about yesterday but um you know you can call Dylan Dingler up after you you clear one of the two catchers and, and like the list goes on and on etc cetera, etc cetera, really we know how hard of an adjustment it is to the major league level, right? This is why, uh, I mean, we talked about a lot with Colt Keith, right? We, we talked about it, uh, you know, Rangers fans talked about it a lot with Wyatt Langford, who just hit for the cycle. He hit had a, a, a much better second half of June, but he got off to an incredibly slow start. You're seeing it in, I mean, all over in Milwaukee, you're seeing it in Baltimore, right? Like all these highly regarded prospects are having a hard time adjusting. So if this, if you're not actually serious about winning, which I don't think you can really claim that you are as a front office this year. Um, if, if you're really not serious, then why not have as many hitters as possible that could maybe be a part of the future adjust to major league hitting the rest of the way? Why why earmark at bats for for Gio Urshela and, and Mark Canna? Why? That's my question. A lot of injury updates. Uh, Casey Mize, unfortunately, headed to the injured list with a hamstring strain. So good news that it's not arm or shoulder or back related, being that those were the injuries that kept him out for two calendar years, um, but still enough to get him on the injured list. Kyder Montero is going to fill his spot and is getting the call up and will start on Wednesday. 
Uh, Jack Flaherty got an injection in his back yet again. This is the second or third time already this season this has happened, and he will miss his next start. They're going to push back his start. It sounds like the Tigers might just roll with a bullpen day, which is always an adventure, to say the least. Uh, and then Javi Baez is beginning his rehab assignment in AAA Toledo. That means his return is looming, which again, as I said earlier, I think means Ryan Kreidler uh, his time with the major league team is probably close to an end. And then Kerry Carpenter, uh, apparently, I, I don't know if it technically is a, is a setback, uh, but in the injury update, it was reported that he in he had increased discomfort and is now resting and rehabbing daily. Um, that doesn't sound like anyone who's coming back anytime soon. I, I, I don't know. I saw some people out there say that they wouldn't be shocked if if he was just done for the season, I, I guess I wouldn't either. I'm I'm notoriously not a doctor, as I say all the time. But uh, yeah, not great for like one of the only guys on the team that had consistent power. Not what you want there. So an absolutely crushing blow if that does mean that he's going to be out for potentially the next couple of months or maybe even the rest of the season. Um, let's talk about the futures game that was announced. Um, Max Clark and how you Lee will be the Tigers organization representative in the MLB's futures game, which is awesome. It's one of my favorite games of the year and it is right before, well, it's during all-star weekend. It's, it's the, one of the first events of all-star weekend where they get a bunch of the top prospects in baseball out there. Uh, last year, Colt Keith and Justin Henry Malloy both participated in it. I believe they both drew walks actually um, in that ball game. And this year we are going to have Max Clark and how you lead. Uh, no Kevin McGonigal, I think is kind of ridiculous, but also maybe that's like my own team's bias. You got 30 teams with, you know, a full organization of 30 different uh, teams to kind of look over. So maybe that's just my bias, but I, I would really have liked to see Kevin McGonigal get an opportunity. I think he's, uh, he's flying up prospect rankings. I still think he's overlooked, though. I think he should be a top 50 prospect in baseball. And then no Jackson Job was pointed out as well. He's coming off of injury, and uh, I think he's going to have just pitched pretty recently to around when the All-Star game is as well. So they are just going to keep him with the organization so they can monitor him. They're not going to send him there to just not pitch. So um, that is where we stand with that. Uh, but it'll be fun to see Max Clark, obviously a, a big fan of the the lights and the cameras and, and whatnot. So seeing him on the big stage will be cool. And then how you Lee has crushed the baseball uh, lately. His OPS in June is like over a thousand or maybe even around 1100. Uh, he's got a batting average of around 400 again in the month of June and his stats on the season have, have obviously been really, really good now because of that hot streak. He has been mashing and he is still pretty darn young as well. He's obviously the prospect we got in exchange for Michael Lorenzen last season. So really cool to see him get some recognition. And uh, yeah, I, I think that that trade's looking, uh, looking really solid as it stands right now, about a year removed from it. So that's pretty much all I got. I mean, previewing the rest of the series, the Tigers play two more against the Minnesota Twins. They play tonight, as you're listening to this, at 8-10. That will be, like I said, Kyder Montero going up against David Festa, who only has one major league start under his belt, and he was not very good in it. So naturally, kind of expect the Tigers to get shoved against. And then on Thursday in the finale, it will be Kenta Maeda against Bailey Ober who uh, is not having a, a great year this year, but is still Bailey Ober and is still a really solid pitcher. And then this weekend they go to Cincinnati. Okay, uh, I think that's that's everything I want to cover on the show. We are going to end the show on a very serious note here. The reason Craig Monroe hasn't been in the broadcast booth in several weeks was recently reported. There have been incredibly serious allegations brought against him involving, honestly, very disturbing subject matter. Um, Craig Monroe released a statement for the first time on Tuesday. I am not a source on this situation. I, I don't have an in. I, I, I'm not talking to, right, like the, the people. I, I'm not part of the, the, like, Tigers media, right? 
this right now is me relaying information that is put out there by those who are covering this, again, very serious situation. And there are a lot of people working for our local Detroit publications that are covering the story. Evan Petzl of The Free, uh, Tony Paul of the Detroit News, and Cody Stavenhagen of The Athletic have all already, as the time that you're listening to this, put out uh, stories and, and pieces on the situation. It's been on the local news. Um, I bring this up not only because it is genuinely one of the bigger stories surrounding this organization right now, but also because I don't think it's something that should just be ignored or, or not talked about or, or not brought up in any capacity. And if you want more information and updates on the situation, again, please go check out one of the resources that I just mentioned. I may not be a source for this, a direct source that is, um, but I, I want to provide resources or point people in the direction of resources if you're looking for someone who is going to be talking to authorities and, and people involved who, who are actual sources uh, and, and again, talking to everybody that is involved in this now what is a an open case. And I will obviously relay any major updates here just like I am right now, but I, I really just wanted to to drive all of those points home. I, I don't think it's something that should be ignored, and, and I, I, I do want to, uh, again, just because I'm not a source, not at least talk about it and point people in the direction of where they can find more information and updates on these, again, very, very, very serious allegations. Okay? Okay, I appreciate you all for tuning in as always, and we will be back tomorrow. Peace and love going to Therapy's Dope. I'll catch you all then. Go Tigers.